Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor here. Today we're going to talk about another bolo. I just had some questions. Somebody showed me a couple of maps. So I'm just going to address maps really quickly here. We're going to go over a few. We're going to talk about where you can find them and where's the best place to sell them on eBay as well, since there's several categories you can list them in. So let's hop over to the screen right now. So here we are with maps. Now, one of the first things to think about is age is not always a consideration on value on the map. What matters in a map is what's on it, what the content of the map is, as well as who made it. Now, earlier maps, like let's say an 1860s map of the United States that has a broad section of states that were around back then, usually will have each state in a different color. Now, most of the time, the coloring on a map is hand-painted in watercolor. Now, you can find an atlas, which is a book which has many uh, individual maps in it, and many times from the 1860s, 70s, and 80s, they'll be fully watercolored inside of this atlas. People will cut them up and sell them individually. We have done that many times. This first example here does look to be from a book. The top left of the uh, map itself has a piece sticking out, and that's usually what I see, and it's better evident here on the this large one here. In the top left, you'll see a piece of paper sticking out. That's usually how they're mounted in books. Most of these style, and from this era, of this type of material, this one's on Indian tribes of the Great Plains, were from a book. So that's one of the main places I look for maps, is cutting them out of books. Because in many times, the book could be trashed out, and the people selling them don't realize that that map is valuable. They think it's just a book in bad condition. So hence, you're able to score some of these items. Now, this one went for 1250 bucks because of the content. There's not many of these sorts of things out. The book was probably a limited press printing from 1835 because again it was expensive back then there was probably a limited amount of people that may have wanted it there may have even been a limited amount of people in some areas that may not have been able to read and the map may not have been any use to them in the first place this would be like for a scholar so that's why this one went for some good money here now here's a newer map this is from 1929 this is a map of irish free state in northern ireland now this is an agricultural map McDonald Gill, Gill does maps, does quite a few maps, actually. I've had a few Gill maps. It's not a rare thing, Gill maps in general, but, but the topic on this one is Irish Free State. Now, the Irish Republican Army and all that stuff goes into play in here. You can look up the history on this to see why it might be so valuable, but this is extremely scarce. $3,746, basically, is what this went for. Some maps can go for twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 or more. It just depends. One of the uh, prime examples is maps that show um, California as an island, things along that line. Or Baja, California, which is in Mexico, not connected to California, because at some points in history, it wasn't known. So that's just a, a prime example of things that, that have value because of reasons like that. So this is just a, a prime example of something that you would want to look for. Finding these may be a different story on some of these. Now here's an 1865 sanitary map of New York City, of Manhattan. This is a 64-inch map. It's probably meant to be mounted somewhere, maybe for workmen or something along that line. There was a sanitary convention, I believe, in 1864. Maybe it was 1865, and some of these items were featured at that. So this one went for an insane amount of money here. So it's the topic. It's New York. It's well collected. There's not many 64-inch maps left from 1865 that are in good condition. So this is just a prime example. Age, again, isn't necessarily the factor in knowing what's worth what. Now here's a map of the Battle of White Plains, White Plains, New York, Fadden and Souther. This is from 1776. These are published in newspapers sometimes, sometimes in books. Sometimes they were just published and sold on their own to raise money for whoever was making them and selling them. So this one went for some insane amount of money as well, as you can see. It's the topic. It's Revolutionary War. We weren't a country, technically. So this is some of the aspects that make things worth a lot of money. It's a smaller. It's not a huge event. It's something that you're just not going to run into. 
So obviously a map from the Revolutionary War is usually worth more than a Civil War map, obviously worth more than World War I, World War II, or even Spanish-American War. So it's just a rare, nice item that you could find. They could show up in picture frames, and you might not realize it's that old of a map. You just got to be able to take a look at it and decide for yourself. If it's in a frame, I always take the frame apart to look at it before I purchase it. If they won't let me do that, I won't buy it. Hint, hint, don't buy it unless you can look at the, the paper and feel it and see it. Because sometimes underneath the frame, it might say facsimile. And unless you take it out, it might be buried in the frame. So again, never trust that it's framed and it's fine and it's original unless you can look at it outside of the frame. Now, here's a newer one. This is something that could turn up in England, even over here, because people went there and traveled and came back after the war. So this is a 1947 London Underground poster map. It's a large-sized one. Uh, it's a common one. Beck makes them. I believe they made these maps all the way into the 1930s. I believe that's one of the first ones, 1930. 35 36 somewhere in that range this one went for fourteen hundred ninety seven dollars again because it's very scarce there's not many of these left london was bombed you know so a lot of this stuff may not have been around it was right after the war production of some items was still limited so that's why this one's worth almost fifteen hundred dollars this is something that would show up in a tourist packet or envelopes maybe that have maps shoved in them from somebody's trip overseas or if you're in england they could show up at a a flea market or a, a, a bin sale or something along that line so not odd items again this isn't that old so now here's a civil war map it's of the battle of gettysburg it's a specific artist um, gettysburg alone is one of the most popular collected ones because of abraham lincoln's gettysburg address so most things that say Gettysburg do have an increased value. Again, some of these were published as like not necessarily a souvenir, but a collector's piece of it to some extent. People raised money from it for uh, things as well. So some of these were published in books talking about the war. But this is just a really nice example here. $1,169 on a bin. Now this is another good example. This is a Normandy, France D-Day map from the U.S. Army Command and their staff. This is something that you could find. Now, this isn't one necessarily that a soldier would have carried into battle um, on the first day of landing on Normandy Beach. This is more along the lines of those directing the battle, I would say, just from the ones that I have seen before. If you've seen some of my videos, you know I do go to military shows. I have seen these in person. I have seen the ones printed on silk for the, the soldiers that were um, embedded in their jackets, or even sometimes they... Uh, had the map on the inside of their jacket as well. So it's just something you can run into. So if you've got a military show in your area, just check it out for curiosity's sake. You'll be surprised at what could show up at a place like that. 790 bucks with 28 bids. Now here's a Pan Am Airways. Now this is something you would see at a travel agent. This is along the lines of a travel poster, a vintage travel poster. Most vintage travel posters in this size range, now this is a large one, 40 by almost 60 inches. If this was a movie poster, that would be called a double sheet. It's a large one. So that's part of the aspect of this. People will mount these. They'll have these framed and put them on their wall. There's people that just collect Pan Am collectibles, especially from the Clippers. So if you don't know what a clipper is, type in Pan Am Clipper and you will see very readily what that is. So it's all in the line of field of stuff that I look for. So anyway, let's move on to the next one. Now maps come in other forms too. This is a promo flyer from basically a real estate company. And I've had real estate maps from the same basic time frame. You, you see that I've got 15,000 items from this era up on my store right now. So this is something of, that I would run into, not specifically Huntington Beach or this area, Grover and Huntington, but I do find ones of this area. I had a Monterey one, which I think I have one in here too, that I sold for some incredibly insane amount of money. And it's, it's in one of my videos, so you can see it if you want to look back enough. But it has a map on the inside of this, of the area. This is another key thing that I always look for. Just because it doesn't look like a map from the outside, sometimes when you open it up, You'll be surprised it's a map. And now that's almost always exclusively to travel, railroad, or real estate from this time frame, at least the ones that I have seen. You will see them in newspapers and magazines occasionally, but they won't garner as much because of the paper not being as good as the paper on these. So nice example, $647 with five bids. 
Now, here's another early example of a North American map. It's historical. It's just before the Revolutionary War. Now, on here, you can see how the Baja California is separated. Now, in some maps, it's literally pinched off, and it's its own island. So, no, I personally have not found one ever that had Baja separated, but I have seen them. They go for some insane amounts of money, and that's a specific factor that people will list in the description. So 600 bucks. There's nothing fancy, spectacular about this one here. That's more or less why it didn't go for so much money. Doesn't have quite the detail. There's no state designations or anything like that, obviously, at this point. It doesn't show the rest of the, the territory because it, obviously it, at some point it wasn't fully explored either. So 600 bucks though, still a nice profit for something like this. Now here's a Monterey map. This one went for almost $600. I sold one that was in ratty condition for almost $450. So it depends on the condition, obviously, but even bad, terrible condition maps can still bring you some good money if it's the right topic. California is one of the ones I always, always look for and hope to find. Tourist stuff. Big stacks of stuff at an estate sale where you see maps and all kinds of just stuff like that. Pamphlets, flyers, brochures, I buy them all. And there's tons of money in this. This one is key, though, because it talks about the oil fields, the mining area, and the forestry in that area. If you're unaware, there's a whole bunch of oil fields on the coast of California, or there was. I don't can't say for sure they're still there or not, but you'll find postcards, and I've sold many from that area. So... Nice one. Monterey stuff always sells. California always sells, and I talk about California all the time. Again, almost $600 for this one here. Now, here's a different one here. This is a rapid transit. This is a subway map from New York from 1937. This is independent lines. This is a like a, a different line of of subway system. So this is one that it says would have been on the station wall. It lists locations and numbers and where the stops are and the whole works. Why this one was worth more money than many of the other ones is because of the size and who produced it, the independent city-owned rapid transit railroad. So naming means a lot in stuff like this. So the name can add an incredible amount to the value on the item. And the last item here is a votes for women suffrage victory map. This is something that can still show up. You will find these in just junk stacks of paper, auctions and things like that, estate sales especially. This is a small one. It would be considered semi a broadside. And this is from the early 1900s, about 1915 or so, maybe $500. This does not look like much to most people. It just looks like a sheet of paper. Chances are it was folded when somebody found it. It could have been folded into quarters. So it's just going to look like a little piece of paper. I pick up every piece of paper that I see at one of these places. Flea markets, estate sales, garage sales, church sales, local live auctions, the whole works. All of those type of places you could find something like this. Fold it again. It says suffrage victory map on the map. Anything that says suffrage, I would look into buying. I would at least do a comp search. Most of the time, if it's a dollar or two, I'll just buy it because there's almost no chance that it's not going to be worth something unless it's a forgery, a fake, a reproduction, or something like that. Most anything that says suffrage, you'll get some money for. may not be a fortune, 10, 20, 30, 40 bucks, but for a dollar or two, you're going to make some money. But anyway, that's just a touch on maps. You can find them all over. Again, books, go back to books. Books are good sources. Brochures can have them in them. Railroads, uh, pamphlets, flyers, things like that. And real estate from early days. The watercolored ones are usually very good. Atlases are a good source of maps, cutting them up. Don't cut them up, though, to your research whether it's worth a bunch as a whole. If it's missing pages of cover, spines totally trashed out, it might definitely be worth cutting up. So anyway, that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.